Mankind has always looked to the stars and wondered, are we alone in the universe? Discoveries of possible life on Mars and intriguing new planets have raised the possibility of other life forms. Today, scientists are probing the cosmos, actively seeking a first encounter with alien life. If a discovery reveals it to be intelligent life, our world might never be the same. For centuries, humans have gazed out at the night sky and wondered if somewhere, out there, some other being might be looking back. We may now be on the verge of answering that age-old question. seem fixated on apocalyptic visions of beings from another world intent on conquering us. They've become imaginary foes who need to be defeated. Welcome to Earth. These creatures were once the sole domain of Hollywood, artists and sci-fi writers. But today, scientists are searching for extraterrestrial life. What they may find could be quite different from our fantasies. Spurred on by recent discoveries from Mars and beyond, scientists are pushing technology to new limits. Searching for evidence of other life out in space, they may have already found evidence of alien microbes. Finding intelligent life may be just around the corner. Looking for aliens is no longer considered off the wall in the scientific community. In fact, the search has gained worldwide momentum. In Italy, a major link summit of international scientists gathered at Capri to share their theories on extraterrestrial life. They came from the fields of astronomy, biology, physics and cosmology. Experts the world would turn to in the event of a first alien encounter. If you look carefully at this representation of a, of a planetesimal or an asteroid-like thing... Which, we, which one will be published? Both. Both. Here, the normally reserved scientists allow their imaginations to soar. I, I, I would say that mankind has to speak to extraterrestrials with one tongue. If an extraterrestrial craft arrives on Earth, you know, yes. that is even more important because we are not prepared. Not at all. Not at all. We never know whether the aliens are actually aiming their transmitters in our direction. What happens if we actually overhear a signal, right? What happens then? It's a factor of 20 faster. Much of the excitement revolves around two American astronomers, Paul Butler and Jeffrey Marcy of San Francisco State University. Together, in less than two years, these men have discovered more planets than anyone else in history. What we know about life indicates that it formed on a planet. Butler and Marcy's new planets have increased the odds of finding alien life. The reason we look out there for planets and the reason we look out there for other creatures has all to do about in here, you know? Where do we fit in the universe? What is our role in the universe? Uh, so, uh, you know, we're driven by our only desire to have a deeper understanding of ourselves. Even with the best telescopes available, astronomers can't see planets beyond our solar system. So Butler and Marcy looked instead for peculiar behavior in the stars. The real difficulty with trying to find planets orbiting other stars is that stars are a billion times brighter than the attendant planets that are going around. Probably the best analogy is to imagine uh, trying to see a firefly uh, at night. 
But now imagine that a nuclear explosion has just gone off next to that firefly. You're going to have a lot of trouble seeing the firefly itself. We admit right from the start we ain't going to see the planet. So we focus our attention on the star, and that's all we observe, in fact, is the star's light. And we look for the effect of the planet on the star. And in fact, planets exert a gravitational force on the star, and so the star is kind of yanked around as the planet goes around. At the beach on Capri, Jeff Marcy uses a boulder to demonstrate this celestial dance. The rock represents the planet, and I represent the star. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So while I'm pulling on the rock, the rock's pulling on me. And if you watch me carefully, you see that while I'm swinging the rock, the rock is swinging me, making me wobble. And the same exact physics applies to a planet orbiting a star. The planet yanks on the star, the star yanks on the planet, and they do a little dance around each other. <laughs> For Butler and Marcy to view this phenomenon, they base themselves on a mountain over California's Silicon Valley. Here at the Link Observatories, they use a 300 centimeter telescope. This giant telescope can focus on stars similar to our own sun. By itself, it can't see everything these astronomers are looking for. But the team believe they're on the verge of uncovering evidence of extraterrestrial life. Astronomers Paul Butler and Jeffrey Marcy point their telescope to promising stars throughout the night, searching for new planets. The starlight gathered by the telescope is sent through a grating, which, like a prism, spreads it into a spectrum of colors. At their office, the astronomers study this spectral data. They're looking for what's called the Doppler effect, changes in the light coming from a star. When a star is attracted by a planet toward Earth, its starlight appears bluer. When the planet pulls the star away from Earth, the starlight appears more red. These black gaps, or absorption lines, are elements in the star that block areas of the light. They tell astronomers what the star is made of. They also make the Doppler shift easier to see. But proving the shift is caused by a planet requires further analysis. Butler and Marcy created a unique software to sift through the results of their studies. We literally have invented a new way to analyze the data that allows us to measure things much more precisely than any group in the world does. To find their first planet, their hybrid computer worked through nearly a decade of data gathered by the Link telescope, a backlog of some 60 star systems. Then, one morning in December 1995, out of the mind-numbing stream of numbers, a repeating pattern emerged, evidence of a planet. It's like 8.30 in the morning. I almost fell off of my chair. Um, there was nobody around, because it's 8.30, it's Saturday morning, and all I could do was stare at my computer screen for about an hour. I called Jeff. I couldn't squeeze out of him what was happening, and I just said to him, finally, Paul, is it good or bad? <laughs> and he said, it's good, get over here again. And when he said it was good, I knew that it was probably something really good. I showed him the data and his jaw hit the floor and he knew it was a planet. What Butler and Marcy detected was a gaseous planet two and a half times the mass of Jupiter, orbiting the star 47 Ursa Majoris. Soon after this find, a second planet emerged, another gas giant, it was six times the mass of Jupiter, circling the star 70 Virginus. Theoretically, both new planets are the right distance from their stars to have water vapor in their atmospheres. Water is the essence of life as we know it. 
Scientists believe the chemical reactions that produced life on Earth began in a watery environment. So our best guess is that there's going to be some layers in these planets that have a warm mist, something like the uh, atmosphere in a sauna in which the air is uh, hot, maybe a little humid, uh, water vapor dancing around. In temperatures reaching 80 degrees Celsius, life in the sauna-like atmosphere of these planets may resemble life on Earth, somewhat like the strange creatures that thrive near hot volcanic vents on the ocean floor. This is how scientists think these aliens in the mist might look. But whether or not life exists on the new planets, it's their size that intrigues Butler and Marcy. They're like Jupiter, which astronomers say protected Earth, so life could develop. In order for us to be here on this Earth right now having this conversation, Jupiter has to exist. And this is relevant because the sorts of planets we find right now are Jupiter mass planets. Uh, Jupiter basically acts as a giant gravitational vacuum cleaner so that all the stuff flying around in space is being gravitationally sucked, if you will, into Jupiter. Jupiter's gravity cleared the solar system of debris that would otherwise have crashed into Earth. On the third rock from the Sun, Earth, intelligent life evolved through a fortunate mix of distance from the Sun, chemical conditions and biological circumstance. Scientists believe life must have happened on other such rocks with similar conditions. The pioneering finds of Paul Butler and Jeff Marcy could bring us closer to finding alien beings on other planets. Thanks to their work, we may now have concrete evidence that planets larger than Jupiter orbit distant suns in far-off solar systems. Something mankind really couldn't prove until now. And where there are Jupiters, there may be Earths. These discoveries have thrown other planet seekers into action. In the Jet Propulsion Labs of NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, technicians look like they're dancing for joy. But in reality, they're hard at work on a new kind of telescope called an interferometer. When perfected early in the next century, it will be launched into space where the smallest vibration could affect its precision alignment. These men are finding ways to stabilize the setup and cancel out any vibrations. The space-based interferometer will probe deeper than ever before into neighboring solar systems, searching for planets 300 times smaller than those found by Butler and Marcy. Planets more like Earth. And we've always wondered, are we alone? What, is the, what are the forces that led to the creation of life in the universe? And it's an area where there are lots of questions and very few answers. <laughs> Charles Beichmann heads Planet Finder, part of NASA's Origins project to find other worlds. And the goal of Origins is over the next 10 to 20 years to actually characterize the planets around other stars, find out other, are there other Earth-like systems, do those Earth-like planets have an atmosphere, does that atmosphere have the, cons the temperature, the density, the chemical composition to either support life or even is there evidence for life? At the moment, the way to find new planets is to analyze the movement of stars. The space interferometer will take things a giant step further. By interfering or canceling out the incredibly bright light of the star, it will reveal the fainter line of any planet circling it. And as you can see here, as we dim the spotlight, as we dim out the sun, the faint planet can be seen orbiting around the star. The light from the star itself has been rejected by the interferometer and you can actually make out the pale blue dot of the planet. But the big question is whether there is life on those distant worlds. Once NASA can see the planet, analysis of its light will tell them how hospitable a place it is. And with a few spectral tracers, a few atmospheric tracers, we can find that out. Is it cold and barren like Mars? 
Is it a very thin atmosphere? Is it very, very hot in a runaway greenhouse like Venus? Or is it somewhere in between those two, something like our own Earth? To get the high degree of magnification needed to find and study Earth-sized planets, a traditional mirror telescope would have to be huge, over 100 meters. That's 10 times the diameter of Earth's most powerful telescopes, like this structure at Kank in Hawaii. Such a big telescope would be cumbersome to launch into space. But with a clever mirror trick, astronomers have found the way around the problem. The interferometer uses a pair of small telescopes placed at either end of a beam as long as an American football field. As it rotates, it traces a path equal to the diameter of a huge telescope mirror, allowing it to see just as much detail. The more telescopes added to the system, the better the view of other worlds. They could be home to creatures only dreamed of in our imaginations. At Mount Palomar in California, a prototype interferometer is being tested. Michael Chow, the world's leading expert on optical interferometry, walks along one arm of the telescope. An inside look at this interferometer reveals more mirrors. From two telescopes around 100 meters apart, starlight is collected and sent to a beam switch yard, a series of precisely angled mirrors and beam splitters. These delay lines, little mirror trolleys, move back and forth to equalize the paths of the incoming light from both telescopes. The light is sent into a beam combiner through more mirrors, where the light waves interfere or cancel out. The remaining light is picked up by a detector cooled by liquid nitrogen to an unbelievable 77 degrees Kelvin or minus 176 degrees centigrade. This allows scientists to test the device in an atmosphere that mimics the freezing conditions of space. The difference between going, doing this on the ground and going into space is on the ground we can see things like Jupiter and Uranus mass planets and in the space we would then be looking for Earth-like planets. Space is where NASA plans to put one of these interferometers by the year 2010. Planet Finder will be fired out beyond Jupiter, where our solar system is free of obscuring dust. Until then, ground-based interferometers continue to gather data on faraway suns that might support heavy planets, building on and refining the work begun by Butler, Marcy and others. With such brand new technology, we may someday find the home of that alien cousin we instinctively believe is out there. But their appearance could surprise us. The science of biology